All right, welcome everyone. This is Gokiana's Virtual Kitchen. We got the little butcher in the house, Taryn. Welcome. Hey, what, are we guys. Doing what are we doing Good today, Taryn? What oh, are we, doing today? we are looking at ground beef today and all the different things we can do with ground beef. Oh, I bet you there's a lot to learn about ground beef because I got a ton of questions. I'm all prepped and Perfect. ready to go. Are you ready? Like it. Ready. Are you ready? Okay, we are back, folks, with Taryn and ground <laughs> beef today, 101. <laughs> Well, that was fast. That was a short, yeah. <laughs> that was a, a shorty. <laughs> to talk about our editor. That's okay. Anyways, Taryn, so we're talking about ground beef today, everyone. Yeah. And I think there's lots to learn about ground beef. Ground beef, I think, is used in probably every restaurant, unless it's a vegan or plant-based restaurant. Yeah. Uh, so, Taryn, let's start. Let's teach us about ground beef today. Teach us. Yeah, well, I mean, we've definitely talked about it in the past, right, with uh, with anyone who's wanting to do their own butchery, making sure you have a good program for your trimming. So ground mm -hmm. beef is, you know, usable in so many different ways. Um, this is um, Fire River Farms beef from Cisco, and this is a lean grind, which is a 76-14%, um, 76 muscle meat and 14% fat. Okay. Um, so this is definitely on the leaner side. Um, you can go even leaner and get to extra lean. Um, really? but then I think in my opinion, the applications kind of, um, lessen, you can't maybe use it for as wide of a variety of things when it's leaner. Um, but yeah, to look at, um, one thing, uh, the color of beef, I feel like is something that people ask about all the time right they're like oh well why is it this color in the middle and this color on the outside uh, but it's just to do with the oxidation oxidization of it um, okay. so yeah can you see jay the package that yeah. i have right yeah and then this is exactly the same beef i opened this one of these packages you know maybe about 20 minutes ago and the color of it has drastically changed so quickly so nice and bright red now compared to yeah. kind of like the purpley browny color that it is in the pack so as soon as the air gets to it it just goes nice and bright red so okay yeah so, so don't that, be so afraid I, yeah don't be afraid of that i guess yeah so. exactly yeah when it's in the package at the store don't be afraid if it's a little bit darker uh it should bloom is a word for it when you open it up and take it okay. out of the pack so yeah um and then, yeah, I, guess that, I have a question for you, Taryn. I'm yeah, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. That's okay. Uh, here, here goes the interruptions from Jay. <laughs> is um, it, does ground beef last long, fresh? Like, how long does a ground beef last? So definitely, if you're buying it pre-packaged, it will last longer. So these chubs have uh, a best before date on them. Okay. Um, so it says freeze by April twenty, uh, April eighth, and okay. I just got this yesterday. So that's like 10, maybe 14 days at the most would be its, its shelf life. Um, so when it's sealed, it'll always last longer. So if you're not sure you're going to use it right away, don't open it. You know, leave it closed. Uh, once you open it, I'd say you only have a couple days, maybe two to three days to use it. Um, with ground beef. Can you hear me? Still there? Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so, uh, with ground beef, though, you always, always, always want to cook it like all the way through, right? To like 160 Fahrenheit or like 71, I think is the Celsius. Um, just because it's so many little pieces, right? That the bacteria can get into it in so many different places um, as opposed to a steak, right? That's just the outside of the meat has the bacteria on it. Mm -hmm. So... So yeah, you can still keep it for a couple of days after you've opened it, or if you purchase it from a grocery store, like we say three to four days fresh, um, because we grind it, cut it and grind it almost yep. that day, right? Um, so three to four days fresh. But yeah, when you're taking it out of a pack like this, two to three days, but leave it sealed if you can. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you can use it basically up till it's best before. Yeah. And frozen yeah, is different, yeah. right? Now tell me a little bit about freezing ground beef. So I got all those tubes. I'm going to use a couple, use one. The other yeah. one's like, do I freeze them? How yeah. would you if recommend you freezing them? Yeah. If you, especially, yeah. If you're in a, um, a restaurant, right, yeah. you're buying large amounts like this, hopefully 
you either know or as you're learning how much you're going through if it's a new program that you're implementing um yeah free some for sure or you can buy it already frozen right and then they've probably like fresh frozen it where they yeah. grind it and pack it and just like freeze it right away a lot yeah. of the times so then you know it's gonna when, when you defrost it you know it's still gonna be good for a couple of days um i think the only thing to be wary of would be like getting to the best before oh, okay. and then freezing it right because then you're going to freeze it on its best before date, but you're going to thaw it for a couple of days in the fridge. So then it's uh, kind of extend, you know, you're kind yeah. of pushing that best before date a little bit. So, yeah. So if you're not sure you're going to use it, freeze it as soon as you can, because that'll prolong your life after you've defrosted it. Now, um, a lot of people, and, and I, I see this on the specs, it says don't yeah. <laughs> thaw under room temperature and warm water. Is that true? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. That's when the bacteria grows. So it's like every uh, 20 minutes bacteria multiplies. So if you're defrosting it in warm water, you're heating it already and you're creating the bacteria. Uh, and then if you just leave it on the counter, it would take, you know, 24 or more hours for it to, to thaw, right? So then you're just sitting at room temperature. So the outside's slowly going to have the, the bacteria growing in the, and getting into the middle. So refrigeration is the best way to defrost anything you have to plan ahead of time a little bit of course um i think they say like it can take like 12 hours for a pound to oh, thaw no what really? so yeah so this one i would put this would probably take like at least 24 to 48 hours to be fully thawed before it's ready to rock wow. um yeah but the other thing you could do would be to defrost it in cold water um because the cold water will keep the temperature more stable. Uh, and then you just kind of replace the water every 20 to 30 minutes. So the, the water stays appropriate temperature. Yeah. And yeah, so then that would be a faster way to do it. So something like this, you know, maybe four hours, I'd say, um, in a cold water, like a constantly rotated cold water bath. Yeah. 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 That's a couple yeah, options. That, yeah. Okay. That's good. Because yeah. I have worked in restaurants. It was like throw it under the tap. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So running water is great, but then, of course, you're just running water for hours. That's good when you have just, like, a small amount of something. Maybe yeah. you only have to run the water for, you know, an hour or half an hour. But, yeah, something like that, you'd be running the water for, like, four hours, which is not ideal in our not water ideal. scene, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't think that's ideal, in my opinion. Yeah, um, probably not nowadays, not nowadays. Not nowadays, especially. No. Yeah, so, the, so putting it into a container with cold water, and then just um, rotating that water so the yeah. temperature stays um, good um, would be ideal. So, um, okay, so what are you doing there? What are you doing? What are you uh, yeah, doing? We're, I'm just starting. I'm going to mix some like burgers <laughs> up because I have all this ground beef here. So maybe as well do something with it. Right. Um, so like we were talking about, this is a quite a lean blend. Um, so for something like that, uh, whether you're buying it from the grocery store and this is all they had, or maybe, you know, Cisco has a good deal on some ground meats right now, right? Yeah. So, like, you you buy the leaner um, variety. You want to make burgers, though. So, something that um, just has a little more fat in it, you can add to it. So, I chose bacon today. So who doesn't Perfect. like bacon in their burgers? Love bacon so, in the burgers. Right? So, I just yeah. chopped up um, some bacon ends, which is also a really awesome find. Um, we sell them at the store because we slice our own bacon here. So, so I have a um, question for you, that Ontario, yeah, because yeah. bacon ends tend to be less money than bacon because bacon yeah, is like crazy expensive exactly nowadays, right? exactly yeah so a lot of suppliers i would say i'm not 100 percent sure um about cisco because i've never bought them from there but we yeah. have a supplier that sells us bacon ends because they slice bacon for customers so they yeah. have bacon ends too right so yeah so for for us it's cheaper for the consumer it'll be cheaper yeah and then you're just cutting it up anyway so it doesn't yeah. have to be doesn't like a be nice yeah. exact doesn't have to be a perfect slice so so yeah, so I'm mixing. I just minced it up by hand. If you have um, a food processor, if you're doing yeah. a lot at home or at the at a restaurant, yeah, throw it in the food processor. It'll mince it up even finer. We run it through the grinder here. We make um, burgers with it here, yeah. and we run it through the grinder, and it just mixes in really nicely. You could add some cheese. I just put a little bit of our house seasoning in this too yeah. now, but with just that little bit, you can kind of see it has a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. You know, a little that. more texture, a little more color, a little bit of fat in there. If you that. cut it up even smaller, you know, it would it would make it even nicer and even there. 
So see, I I love the chunks. I like seeing stuff in my burgers. It is nice. It is right. nice, and you'll get a nice bite. Yeah. Of it, right? And you'll actually yeah. really taste it. So, um, yeah. And another thing we've talked about in the past at a restaurant is having you know your scale. Yeah. yeah. So. Tara always sells the scale. Scale, right? You carry that. You Did carry you? that around all day, don't you? I do. It just fits right in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to ask you, what is the what is the ideal from a from a butcher, from yeah. your perspective? What is the yeah. ideal burger size? Size. Well, we sell slightly smaller ones, yeah. just because this little machine, this little press that I have, only fits like four to six ounces in it. Okay. So I think again too on right now prices yeah. of everything are going up yeah, so yeah. much. So having a slightly smaller size burger, you know, you can maybe still charge the same price with a little bit less meat yeah. uh, or something like this where you added bacon into it and the bacon probably costs or does cost less than the beef. Yeah. Right. So that's a good way to cut your cost down. Um, so if you I'm, added a little bit of pork to it as well, yeah. like a little bit of ground pork and a little bit of beef, Definitely to cut the cost down, and you're not gonna like notice. Um, yeah. Does that stick price. to the top? Uh, a little bit, but that's so, so cool. So we have papers. Yeah, so this is a, this is an awesome little machine. It's just a handheld burger press, right? For someone who's not doing thousands of them a day, you know, you're maybe cool. we do like sixty to one hundred and twenty yeah. a day, maybe. So that's the, that's it works not perfectly. A lot at all. That's no, no, it's not too bad. Yeah, that's a ton. That's a ton. <laughs> it's not too bad. Not every day, but someone's mostly. walking around with a big arm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. That's not <laughs> hey, I have a uh, question for you then. So, yeah. what I did with a burger that I created is I, yeah. I created a flex burger a few years ago where I used okay. lentils and mushrooms, oh. and we cut the cost of the burger down by sixty yeah. percent by beautiful. cutting it half of the plant with plant based products that were like. Lentils are so inexpensive and stuff like that. Yeah. And honestly, you still have the, and we went with the high fat yeah. ground beef. Yeah. And the high fat had all the flavor and then the lentils and everything else. And then we called it a flex burger, which other companies stole the idea later. But um, it was really to reduce the cost. Yeah. Yeah, product, totally. Right? And that's that's going to be a big thing for the next few years. Yeah. And I mean, it kind of, it always is a thing where we want to make sure we can make the most off of our products and still give our customers a good product, right? Yeah. So yeah. something, I think that's awesome. I think the only thing with that, and you obviously did some research, but if people yeah. are going to try things like that, they just want to be careful how much like water is in those yeah. items, right? Because you don't want to have a watery burger or um, yeah. how it, yeah, how well it blends in with the beef already too, right? Yeah, so, yeah there was yeah. a few tests. We had to do a few tests, but for restaurants oh, sure. out there, you know, using, we used quinoa, wild mushrooms. We used uh, uh, lentils. Yeah. And there was one other ingredient, but it really cut the cost big time. And then it also added some new flavors, new profiles, yeah. Yeah. all those different things there. But yeah, cutting yeah. the product like that with uh, with different things in it really helps with yeah. the price points. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's lots of options for that, right? And much, lots of people put mushrooms in their burger already. What about onions, right? Like really finely yeah. based onions and stuff. So yeah, I, I think that that's idea. a great idea. Yeah, there's so many options. But yeah, even other proteins can reduce your pricing and, and they just add a little more flavor and a little more texture like the bacon and so yeah that's great yeah being a little creative with what you have i think is going to be important for the next couple of years for sure while everyone's kind of getting back on their feet exactly so i have a question yeah. for you we're, we're going to run yeah. to a quick commercial here folks okay. be right back with taryn and then we got a couple questions and then we'll, we'll let you keep making burger patties okay i'm doing it i'm going to finish this <laughs> you're going to finish that okay be right <laughs> yeah. back folks okay, okay. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Cisco's Virtual Kitchen. Hello again. <laughs> and, and we got the little butcher in the house, Taryn. 
little uh, butcher's here. The little butcher's here <laughs> making burgers. Yes. Uh, I finish my burgers. You finish, finish your burgers? Yeah. Awesome. Now, I have a question for you on the burger thing before uh, yeah. we wrap up today, but yeah. is do people put like binders or something in there? You're not putting anything in there. You're just making burgers from burger ground beef. Do people yeah. put binders? I I think you can, but personally, I don't think it's worth necessary. it or necessary. Um, I think especially when you get the right grinds of beef. Yeah. Um, so I think really, yeah, like the leaner stuff we have here, in my opinion, would be good for something more like making like tacos or maybe okay. a pasta sauce that you don't, you know, you're going to add lots of liquid back into it yeah. um, and then bind the fattier meat. So a uh, like regular is more like 75, 25 ish or like the, yeah. um, sorry. Yeah, no, the regular is like, yeah, 70, 30 almost. So it's even more yeah. fat. And then you kind of go up from there. So those kinds of things, you know, then you can do like uh, beautiful burgers with and the fat will kind of mix into the meat and bind it more. So that way, same with meatballs and meatloaf and all those things too. So, yeah, so I think the fattier grinds, you definitely don't need to add yep. any binders. You could possibly, if you had a leaner grind, add something into it. But mm -hmm. like you said, maybe it's, the, some quinoa or some lentils or some mushrooms yep. that are finely ground, right? I think if we blitzed up the bacon even more and made it almost like a paste, that would help to buy oh, that's cool. the burgers too, right? So Eggs are um, okay? Is eggs okay? Eggs are okay, yeah. Eggs are okay, okay. but you're just adding to your cost then, yeah. right? Which I don't think, it, again, is necessary. I feel like that was something that we people always did. Yeah, so yeah, long. yeah, yeah. That was, that was, <laughs> that was mom's yeah. recipe, right? Yeah, right. Crackers it, and eggs. Yeah, yeah, and like bread, those kinds of things do help to bind it. But I yeah. think if you if you get the right meat uh, and you have the right ingredients in it, otherwise you don't necessarily need those things. And nowadays, people have, well, you know, there's allergies and the bread, the bread's feeling celiac or gluten free, right? So it's just like adding those things are gonna, you know, lesser, take it off your menu for more people. Yeah. So if you don't have to, then it's better not to. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Well, yeah. you, you taught us a little bit about ground beef today, Taryn. Hopefully. Hopefully right? at least a little bit. <laughs> well, it's it's an area. I think, you know, like we're getting into barbecue season now and everyone's yep. looking at cost. Obviously, cost yep. is everywhere. We all know that's not yep. a, it's yep. not a yep. hidden secret. It's it's everywhere. No. So the idea is that we can give our customers <laughs> and what they need to know about yep. ground beef yep. and to help them save maybe a few dollars here and there. By For doing sure. different things, it, it really does help. So thank you so Good. much. Good, you're Ta welcome. And so for everyone else, we'll be back tomorrow with the opposite of this show, our plant-based show, mm -hmm. with our plant-based chef. So it's ground beef today and plant-based tomorrow. So awesome. we have that tomorrow. And then Friday we have Campbell's with her Influencer Fridays. And you saw the commercial if you were on the show earlier, the commercial through Restaurants Canada show. Surprise, I have a booth, a podcast station, and a show that we're going to be doing from the three days at the Restaurants Canada show. So that will be a lot awesome. of fun too. So yeah. Taryn, thanks again. Good. Everyone Thank else, you. tune and follow SEK Network on all Cisco Canada social channels. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Taryn.